It's hard to believe that I've been doing this for over five years now. Kind of crazy when you think about it. But at this point, it's always tradition at the very beginning of the year to pause and reflect on the best watches from the previous year. If nothing else, kind of recenters me before I dive off into a bunch of other different reviews. So welcome to 2023. And just to be clear here, these aren't the best watches that were released from last year, but rather the best watches I reviewed from last year the more memorable ones that I'll be thinking about for years to come. So with that said, get ready for the top 10 watches of 2022. And coming in at number 10, we have a metric ton of loom with the Signum Cuda Titanium fully loomed, which is still quite a mouthful. During the day, these watches from Signum aren't really anything that's gonna grab your attention. For the most part, they're fairly standard, low key 42 millimeter divers. And if you didn't know any better, you'd be looking at these and thinking, this is just another micro brand diver, but in titanium. No big deal here. But once the lights go out, you see what makes these watches really shine. Over the years, I've seen a lot of great watches when it comes to loom, and these Kudas are among the best and fully worthy of being kings of loom. And that's not just my opinion. Over on Jody's channel, these Signum Kudas obliterated the competition in his Loom Wars. Now, this wasn't the only King of Loom I saw this year, but I think going forward, these Signum Kudas will be the ones that everyone will be thinking about and talking about as the watch to beat in 2023. Coming in at number nine, we have a quartz watch that's done right, which I know for some of you is an impossible endeavor, but just bear with me here. This is the Swiss watch company Arc, which I reviewed at the very beginning of last year. And I believe it's almost an ideal grab and go quartz watch as it's 38 millimeter case is thin and extremely lightweight thanks to a titanium build. It's durable with hundred meters of water resistance, screw down crown, as well as has an extra scratch resistant coating on that titanium. Not to mention a flat sapphire crystal with 16 layers of AR coating which is a crazy amount of AR, but that does help keep the dial very clear, as well as a ton of loom just to make it easy to read at night. And all of this at a pretty reasonable price of 199 US. Basically, it's got everything you need to be a functional powerhouse, which is something I learned firsthand when I took it on a quick trip to Nashville before my review last year. During that week, I found it to be an ideal quick and easy travel watch, and especially during winter where that thinness really came in handy. Quartz or not, it's a great watch. And the only reason I haven't worn it more this year is because my wife quickly stole it after that trip. Since she doesn't like automatics, it also made it a perfect watch for her as well. Next up at number eight, we're not just talking cocktail time, but we're talking mojito time with the Seiko SRPE 45, or more commonly known as the mojito. Seiko's standard cocktail time watches are mostly loved, with their size being one of the few complaints. But in recent years, Seiko has released a few smaller watches in that collection, and the 38mm Mojito is one of them. But there's more to the Mojito than just being a smaller cocktail time. It's basically an entirely different watch than the standard cocktail times. Rather than the kaleidoscopic dial that they're known for, here it's more of a textured gloche pattern as well as Arabics and a chapter ring at the very outer edge, making it perhaps a little more casual, complicated, and in my opinion, more functional than the standard versions, all while being just as breathtaking to look at. For those of you who are longtime viewers, you know that I like my dress watches a little more complicated and visually interesting. And in that way, the Mojito is right up my alley. Where I was easily able to sell my Blue Moon cocktail time, this one I just couldn't let go. I have way too many dress watches, so I told myself if I was going to keep this one, I was going to sell one of my others. And I wound up selling my beloved Bambino just to make room for the Mojito. So for now, this one is firmly in my collection. Coming in at number seven, we have the San Martin 62 Mouse Chronograph, which is somewhere back there in one of those watch boxes. And it may surprise some of you to hear an AliExpress watch on this list. But this watch really surprised me when I got it. It's easily my favorite San Martin. If you don't remember the review, it's basically a Seiko 62 Mas homage, but one using a Seagull mechanical chronograph movement. 
And the interesting thing about all of this is that Seiko never made a chronograph version of the 62 Moss, or at least as far as I know they didn't. This is just something San Martin came up with, and it works surprisingly well. They did a fantastic job of integrating the pushers and subdials into a 62 Moss design, making it a fairly familiar homage, but one with a really interesting twist. I think the thumbnail in my review was something like, why didn't Seiko think of this? Or why didn't Seiko make this? And that's a statement I still stand by. Heck, they should make one now, even if it's a Solar Quartz version. The one downside to this one, or maybe stupid side to this one, is that San Martin integrated a screw down crown into it. And that's potentially dumb because a screw down crown doesn't always work well with mechanical movement. So there are some people that reported they overwound it and couldn't screw that crown back down. Which isn't something I ever had a problem with, but something you should be aware of. But other than that, it's just an impressive and cool watch from San Martin. Over this next year, I am planning on cutting back on my just out of control collection here. And out of the ones I have, I think this is going to be my one San Martin and one Seagull mechanical I'll keep. I like it that much. Next up, at number 6, we have the Axios Tribune. Axios is a sister brand to Zelos, and this one was quite a departure from the previous tool watches. It all starts with this beautiful Art Deco sector style dial, which is a sand textured base and multiple brushed metallic rings placed over it, which is then all paired with this slim and sexy 38mm Aquaterra like case. Kind of an odd sounding combination, but it's one that I think works creating something that's a bit more casual and maybe more dressy compared to their other offerings. And in the world of microbrands, that's a rarity. It's just nice to see something being developed other than a diver. Especially when it's a gorgeous looking watch that can be worn in many different situations. The one weakness of the Tribune is perhaps its 50 meters of water resistance. But with a total thickness of 10 millimeters, and that does include a box sapphire crystal, 50 is understandable. The sector style dials are becoming more common, and I've seen some great ones from Vario and Notus. Yet I think this Axios is one that can still stand on its own, with its interesting multi tiered dial paired with some very interesting colorways. Coming in at number five, we have the Wise Watches Atomascus 88. Also, another mouthful, but this is one of the best all around divers I saw this year, as well as being another King of Loom. When Wise asked if I wanted to check this one out, I really wasn't sure what to expect. But I gotta say, they knocked this one out of the park. It's more of a dress diver than a straight up tool watch, but it is a beautiful 41mm diver with ideal proportions. Every millimeter of its 904L stainless case is polished to the nines, giving it just a beautiful and breathtaking case. Although what I fell in love with was more the dial as the depth and the textures it contains are always a joy to look at. And I particularly love the colorway that they sent. With its coffee colored bezel and gray dial, it's just very unusual and striking. And I doubt I'll ever get another watch that comes close to that look. I also appreciate just how the various elements here have a familiar feel, yet as a whole the design is very original. It really is a fantastic diver with the only negative thing I've found being that it doesn't come with a bracelet. It does have two great straps, but a nice 904L bracelet would make this an almost perfect package. For number four, we have the best style of the year with the Strom Opav, an unusual name from an unusual Norwegian microbrand that has an unusual but beautiful dial. Where the stamped steel dial has multiple layers of lacquer applied over it, just to achieve this mesmerizing effect creating a rippling lake that extends out to the outer edges, hitting the applied indices before dropping off to a sunken chapter ring. It's one of those dials that looks good in pictures, but just amazing in person, as every aspect of its dial plays with the light in its own way as it moves around. Out of all the watches I've seen this year, there's only one other dial that I think comes close to looking this good, and we'll get to that one shortly. But I think the unusual design of the Opav makes it the best dial of the year. Now, of course, a watch is more than just a dial. 
as this one rests inside a 41 millimeter brush case that's all powered by Salida SW200, making it a good, well-built sports watch that's sure to catch some attention with its unusual design. Now, I'm sure some of you are expecting a Zelos somewhere on this list, and that's exactly what we have at number three, with my favorite Zelos of all time, the Spearfish. For years, one of Zelos' most popular watches has been their entry-level Swordfish. And the Spearfish is really their attempt to make a higher-end version of that Swordfish. So they took the 40mm version of the Swordfish as a template and then just started refining every aspect of it. Smoothing out the case, moving on to this amazing textured sunburst style, and swapping a base Seiko NH35 for an LJP G100. And that movement is really one of the more interesting aspects of the Spearfish, especially since it's one of the first commercial applications of it. The G100 is a Swiss-made movement, but for all intensive purposes, it's basically a super-powered 9015 with an extended 68-hour power reserve. And that combination makes the Spearfish a real rarity in the watch world, as you don't often see a watch under a thousand bucks with a 28,800 beat per hour movement and an extended power reserve. It's usually one or the other. Typically, you don't see both until you get to the luxury level watches. Although, the Spearfish is much more than that movement. And for me, it's an ideal microbrand diver. It's comfortable, durable, highly functional, as well as one that has a unique and breathtaking design. As divers go, there's only one that I own that I like better. And again, we'll get to that one shortly. I should also point out that Zelos recently introduced a GMT version of the Spearfish, and I just put out a review of that a few weeks ago. But as great as it is, I actually like the original better. Next up, and coming in at number two, we have the first true GMT I've ever reviewed on this channel, with the Jack Mason Strata Timer. Absolutely love this GMT and I'm excited to eventually get my hands on a production unit. There's just so much to like here, from the design, the build quality, the magnificent bracelets, and most important of all, just how comfortable it is on the wrist. So this watch was absolutely destined to be on this list somewhere, but there are really two reasons that it made it all the way up to number two. The first of which is the movement. The Strata Timer is the first watch I've seen, and will be one of the first watches ever released with the new Miyota 9075 True GMT movement. And for those of you who've been begging for a True GMT, this movement will allow microbrands to create True GMTs at reasonable prices, or at least to create True GMTs that aren't at astronomical luxury price points. So the Strata Timer for me sets a very important baseline on what we can expect going forward in the next year. And from what I've seen, it's going to be a pretty exciting year when more of these 9075s come out. The second reason is that Jack Mason is based in Dallas, and they're actually about 20 minutes from my house. So they're local, and I've been able to visit them, talk to the people behind it, and really learn about their design philosophy and what they want to do. And along the same lines, Jack Mason is fully dedicated to becoming the microbrand of Texas. And as such, they've integrated a little bit of Texas flair and symbolism into their watches. And I'm an absolute sucker when it comes to Texas stuff, which is the whole reason I have a Bucky's mug right here. So this kind of thing, I absolutely love. And I know a lot of that is just really personal and subjective for some of you. But as I said before, this list is more about the more memorable watches of the year for me. And that's exactly what the Strata Timer is. Now, before we get to number two, I gotta put this back and I do have a couple of honorable mentions as well. First up is a watch I'm still not sure how to pronounce with the Biotic Formicide. And this is easily one of the most unique designs I've ever run across. As it's kind of an alpinist made to look like an ant, Long story with all that, but the short version is that I absolutely love this watch, enough that I actually jumped on the Kickstarter. But unfortunately, after it was fully funded, the brand owner canceled it. My best guess is that with inflation, he went back over the numbers and just couldn't make them work. And the second honorable mention isn't a watch at all, but rather a mod for a watch, with the full metal case and bracelet mod for the Casio Royale by SKX Mod. I've always liked the design of the Royale, but I've also always felt that it was pretty cheaply built. 
which it is. I mean, we are talking about a $20 watch here. But for me, that cheap build quality was the one thing really holding it back. Yet, swapping out the cheap case and strap to the modded case and bracelet really elevated the watch to a whole new level for me. To the point that now I think the build quality is one that's truly worthy of that awesome design. Before the mod, my Royale pretty much sat in the watch box. But now it lives on my desk and is really the watch I reach for when I need to grab something and go quick. With that said, let's close this thing out with the top watch of 2022. So coming in at number one, we have the Seiko SPB-299 or the Save the Ocean Glacier Marine Mass Reduced or Glacier MMR, which some of you may have caught on my wrist earlier. And for those regular viewers, this probably shouldn't be any surprise. But if it is, let me know down below. Now, as much as I like the Spearfish, I love the Glacier Seiko more. In fact, right now, it may be my favorite watch, period. And it's definitely my most worn watch since I got it. A lot of people seem to prefer the Seiko 62 Moss just for its size. But for me, the Marine Master Reduced is the way to go. It is a tad larger at 42, but thanks to its case shape, it wears much smaller. And on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, I think it feels like the perfect 40 millimeter. I also love the more refined case shape. Yes, the polished areas make it a little less tooly, but all those curves and angles make it far more interesting to look at. So in general, I think the Marine Master Reduce are all winners in my book. But you take that case and combine it with this captivating Save the Ocean dial, and you have something truly special. And at the same time, I love that there's still a sense of subtlety to this one. At a distance, I think it looks just like any other blue dial diver. But when you get up close to it, it really draws you in. Another thing I appreciate is this pale blue coloring. Just because if I ever decide to buy another expensive diver, even a blue diver, I seriously doubt that it's going to look anything like this. So as a collector, there's very little chance of overlap moving forward. There are only two things I really don't like about it, and that's loom and value. And granted, those are two potentially big topics, but otherwise, this one's just about perfect for me. And with that, you have the top 10 watches of 2022. As usual, let me know what you think about all of this, as well as what is your top watch of last year. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help the channel. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.